Welcome everyone, as I greet you uh, in the name of Hashem, uh, for the learning of Torah Hashem, Be'ezus Hashem is Baruch, Baruch Shech Yonu V'Kimonu V'Giyonu L'Azman Azeh, the first year, Chumash uh, year that I'm giving here at my new shul, Agudas Yisrael Be'ezev of Fearways Lakewood, and this is actually the inaugural Chumash year, and uh, we thank you for coming. Of course, we thank TorahAnyTime.com for the global platform for the Shurim and Chazak for uh, spreading the word around. We also uh, thank our special sponsors for this uh, very special Shir. Uh, we're sponsored Lurfu Shleima for Mordechai Tzvi ben Sarah Rachel. Mordechai Tzvi ben Sarah Rachel, you should have from Hashem. Lurfu Shleima. And Arichas Yomim, Yisrael Shachar Yisrael. My dear friend, Dr. Block, dear friend and Talmud, Mishni Yomis, Daf Yomi, Chumash Yorim, Dr. Block is sponsoring the Shia with his family, wishing us well in our Chanukah Sabayis, both in our home in, in Fairways Lakewood and in our new shul. <coughs> he said all the brachas of this week's parasha should be chal. Thank you very much. The share is sponsored all the way from Manchester, England, by the Halpern, Pollock, and Schechter families, Le'ili Nishmas, Rav Mordechai, Ben Rav Meir Weiss, Rav Mordechai, Ben Rav Meir Weiss, and Shama should have a licht again, Gan Eden, Shibim for his family, for all of us, and all of Klal Yisrael. Finally, we want to remind you about dailygiving.org. That's a great way to give a dollar a day to a world-class organization and uh, dailygiving.org, the Dafyami of Tzedakah. Swipe a credit card, they'll give a dollar from you to a world-class organization every day. You'll have the feeling of knowing that stuck Tatsum among us every day. It's a great <coughs> thing to start for the new year. Dailygiving.org. Try it, you'll like it. If you'd like to sponsor next week's year, which is the last Shear of Tuf Shin Pei Aleph, the last shear of the year. Text me at 718-916-3100, 718-916-3100 to spell, help sponsor this worldwide wide share. Or to rmmwsi, Rabbi Meshmer Weiss, at at aol.com, rmmwsi, at aol.com. The... Uh, The parasha tells us, Tachas asher lo yavadato es Hashem alikecha b'simcha. That the klolos come because you didn't serve Hashem your God with simcha or betuv levav. The Rav Shtenbach writes in his Biurim and Hanhagis that the Iker Avoid of Elul, as we get ready in the last month of the year, everything goes according to the finale, is the avoida of Ani Daidi. I am to my beloved. Of course, the Daidi is Hashem. And it's working on our relationship with Hashem, a relationship of love. I am to my beloved. And this is what Dovra Melech writes, If the Torah would not be my delight, I would be lost in suffering. Lule, Lamed Vav Lamed Aleph, is Elul. In Elul, the Avaida is that Sayroscha Shashuai, that the Torah should be a delight. This is going to be a great theme that we're going to discuss now. The Torah shouldn't be a burden, like Ramayshi used to say. It shouldn't be a tashvera taira. It shouldn't be that we have 613 obligations. As Ramayisha used to say, is gliklech tzadayna yid. It's lucky. Ashrei yoishrei veisecha. Right? It's, uh, it's a great happiness to me. Ashreinu. Ma toiv chelkeinu. Ma noim geroleinu. How sweet is our lot. And Dabra Melch says, Lulei Sayraska Shashua, if I wouldn't 
relate to your Torah as a delight, then I would be lost in the din of Rosh Hashanah. It's a very important thing. Rav Chaim Vital, the star Talmud of the Arizal, he writes that atzvus, sadness, depression, gloominess, that all comes from the Zuma of Samoel, Samkel. Comes from the Zuma of the Nachash HaKadmaini. He says that's why we find that by both the curse of man and the curse of woman, it talks about sadness. By the man it says, you're going to eat your food with sadness. It's going to be panas, it's going to be shver. And by a woman it says, The idea of atzmus, atzmus, the opposite of simcha, of happiness, comes from the Yitzhahara. Now, they say over that the Arizal attributed all of his incredible revelations, all of his incredible greatness, he attributed to the fact that he did all the mitzvahs with a tremendous simcha, with a tremendous joy, with a tremendous cheshing. But now let me explain to you, we want to plug in the phone, a second, I'm not going away. The let, let us understand better why doing mitzvahs with a love, with feeling, why it's so important for Yom Adin. And this is going to be the foundation of today's shir. Something that the great Baal Musa, Rabbi Itzel of Blazer, writes in his Koych Ve'ar. If you want to look it up in the Koych Ve'ar, it's Maimer Nun Aleph, the 51st Maimer. Rabbi Itzel Blazer writes that it's a tremendous segula to be Zeich Abedin if we could cause that Hashem should treat us like his family. Right? In our davening, we always say, by Tia Shaifer, Im Kevanim, Im Kavadim. Either we're we'll going to be like children or like servants. Im Kevanim, Rachameinu, Kerachim, Avalbanim, then Hashem will have mercy on us like a father to a child. An egg and a kin, my only child. Im Kavadim, Eineinu, Luchot, Luyos, Achetichineinu, Vitsaitzik, Ardineinu. Then we have to have hope. That if it's going to be like an avid, so then it's going to be, you know, the regular uh, procedure, you know, uh, judiciary procedures. That's already a much more difficult business. So Rabitzala says, how do we influence that Hashem should look at us like Bonnet? So actually, Rabitzala tells us that it's a befavish Gemara and Bava Basar. Gemara and Bava Basar and Afyud says, when we do the will of Hashem, heim kriyim bonim, we're considered children. If we're not doing the will of Hashem, then kriyim avodim. So he asks that it can't be literal that if we're not doing the will of Hashem, in other words, we're sinners, we're, we're called avodim. An evid. It, it, it listens to the master. He doesn't have a choice. He says, what it means is, if we're oisin ritzayna yishel makim, if we do the will of Hashem, that means we do it with a cheshik, with a feeling, with a hislavis, with a passion. Rachman aliba boy Hashem wants our heart. If we're oisin ritzayna yishel makim, so then we're called banim. Ain't oisin ritzayna yishel makim, if we're not doing the will of Hashem, we're just doing it because we have to, right? We're doing it, mitzvah anoshim muda. we're doing it, you know, because this is what's expected of us, 
but not with a happiness, with an excitement, with a vigor, with an interest. So then we're out like Avonim. Avonim that do the will of their Adon. They don't have a choice. Says Rabbi Itzala, if, if Hashem treats us like Bonim, then it's a whole different ball game. He doesn't use the words ball game, but that's, you know, that's a game changer. So we see that when we do with a cheshek, when we do a mitzvah with a gefil, then the Rabbi Nishalom treats us like family. It's, we're going to be treated like family. You know, Rosh Hashanah is a lot easier to deal with. That's what we all are striving for. And Rabbi Zala says that this is also pshat in, in, in the Gemara. The Gemara says, Lama toikin or marian kishen yashvin. Why do we do the set of tkiyas and everything when we're sitting? And then toikin or marian kishen oindin. And as we have the tkiyas that we do uh, during Shman Esrei, right? By Mosef. And then we have the tkiyas that we do beforehand by tkiyas Shaifer. Why do we do two sets? We know we have, uh, we do all kinds of different computations. So the Gemara says, Kedela Arvev Hasot. In order to confuse this up. And Rashi says, what does it mean to be ma'arvev asatan? Shalom yastin, to stop him from prosecuting. That's a very big thing. You know, if you could come into the courtroom and the judge tells the prosecutor, you're dismissed, that's a very big thing. So we do the two different sets of tkiyas in order to silence the satan. How does that work? How does actually literally la'arvev asatan means to confuse the satan? How do, what's the process? How do we confuse the Sutton? So some learned that the pshat in confusing the Sutton is, is that when the Sutton sees that we're so particular to get it right with all different types of configurations, tkir, tru, tkir, tkir, tru, tkir, shvam, tkir, tkir, shvam, tru, tkir, you know, all kinds of different compilations and tkir, stem, yushiv, and tkir, stem, umid. It says the Sutton sees that we're we have a loving relationship with the Rabbi Nisham, so that means that we're doing tshuva me'ava, tshuva of love. Tshuva from love, the zedainais, the willful sins, becomes a chuyas, becomes merit. So then the son gets confused. What am I going to do? I'm going to prosecute? The prosecution is going to turn into mitzvahs. He gets completely confused. But Rabbi Tzala says something else. Rabbi Tzala says that when Hashem sees that we are so careful to get it right, and we stay in shul till two o'clock, three o'clock in the afternoon, to do it so many different ways, and we have a loving relationship, then we're like children. Right? Then, we, then, then we're kibbanim. Kibbanim, the satan the only could operate if he's working with the regular you know, court. With the family, to the contrary, the satan knows if he's going to, Start prosecuting, the Tata is going to get angry. So it makes him confused. And this is also shot in the famous Gemara in Brachis. The Gemara in Brachis says that the Malachi Asharis, the celestial angels, had a question to the Rabbi Nishla. The celestial angels uh, said to Rabbi Nishla, you know, Rabbi Nishla, you write in your Torah Beferish that you're not going to take bribery. Asher lo yisaf on him, you're not going to show favor. V'lo yikach shaycha. Yet, you say to your own children, Yisah Hashem panam v'ilecha v'yaseim l'cha shalom. That Yisah Hashem panam v'ilecha, that you will show favor. So which one is it? You're going to show favor. You're not going to show favor. You know, which one is it? So Hashem says, how can I not show favor to my children when I told them v'yachalta v'savata v'irachta, that they only have to bench if they're satisfied, if they're satiated, and yet they bench even even if they eat a little amount. In other words, since they show that they're so excited to do what I want, that they go beyond the letter of the law, all then are my children. My children, all bets are off. My own family, everything is different. And this is the way, here, here we have, this is what Rav Sternbach was talking about. When he said the avoid of Elul of the last month of the year, the hachana for Yom Adin for day of judgment is Anila Dodi. 
that I should show that I have a loving relationship with the Rabbi Nishlai. Lule Seraska Shashuai, Torah is not a burden, David Amalek says. Lule Isis Elo Seraska Shashuai, the Torah is a delight by me. The mitzvahs are, are a delight. There's a Sifur night in this week's Pasha. It's on another Pasik. In this week's Pasha, the Pasik says, you shouldn't turn from all of that which I commanded you today. Yom in a small, to the right, to the left. To follow other gods. Now, usually other gods means Avaydazara. But we know that the Torah is written for all ages. The Rabbi Nisham, was who Hoya Hoiva Viya, he wrote the Torah, he wrote the Torah for all generations. He knew there would be a lot of generations that we wouldn't even be tempted for idolatry. Right? Idolatry is not on our list of temptations. So the Sifurne says that one of the meanings of Lalechis Akre Elohim Acherim is to do the mitzvahs, mitzvahs anoshim limuda. It's in this week's Pasha the Sifurne. To do the mitzvahs by rote, simply because that's the way our parents raised us, that's what we saw our father do, but Hashem <laughs> doesn't play into it. The feeling of Asher Kichanu of you sanctified us with your mitzvahs, Hashem, and we want to do your will, and we want to give Nachas Ruach it's that's missing. That's not there. He says, if that's not there, then it's like we're serving other gods. We're not serving Hashem. Yishom Lechem, we say in, in, in Kriyashma, in the second parasha, Pen yifte levavchem v'sartem v'avadetem elihim ha'cherem. If we do it as if it's another god, in other words, if we do it without feeling, we have to understand that this is a very serious thing. Dovod HaMelech, the great singer, the one with tremendous passion, David Amel describes himself, I need tefillah. Right? Tefillah is a relationship with the Rabbi Nishlam. Right? David Amel says, and you know, you know, I always point out that it's really fascinating to see an address of a Pusik. You can tell a lot from the address of the Pusik. This Pusik in Tillam is Perak Lamed Bey's Pusik test. I don't think it takes a tremendous leap to know that Lamed Bey's test is late type. So what does the Pesach say? Altiu kisus kefered ain't of it. Don't be like a horse. Don't be like a mule that does things without understanding. No, it's don't, don't do things just like a behemoth. Behemoth doesn't have intellect. Doesn't have heart. Altiu kisus kefered ain't of it without understanding. Rabbeinu Yoyna in Shari Tshuva is very strong over here. Rabbeinu Yoyna in Shari Tshuva, Shar Gimel, Kuf Samach Tes, Ayin, writes that Bnei Odom that do things without any feeling, they just go through the motions. Their mouth does the walking and davening. Right? Their put on the tefillin like it's a blood pressure cuff. And they pass by the mezuzah without a flicker of recognition. People have a bigger flicker recognition when they see the Lexus logo, when they see the Parker pen logo, than they do to the, to the mezuzah. Right? There's no, no emotion that's generated by tzitzis or yamaka. Right? So then the, he says, very scary, that that's those people are oizvei Hashem. They're forsaking Hashem because they're, they're leaving Hashem out of the whole equation. And he says, mm, it's scary because Rachman al-Islam, the Pasuk says, oizvei Hashem yichlu. The Chai Adam in Klal Samaches write, writes that a person should do the mitzvahs b'simcha g'dayla with great happiness. And not just simple, simple, and then he waxes eloquently. He says, 
You know what kind of simcha gadayla kemaitse tanugim? Like you found tremendous delights. You found somebody found uh, 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 tickets for a seven-star hotel for ten days. Vavonim toivos. It's as if you found diamonds. And this is the, uh, uh, to today's day and age. You went to a Chinese. You went to a uh, a uh, yard sale, and you found a drawer of old. Baseball cards, each one worth hundreds of dollars. You found the full drawer and bought it for $25. That's what it says about the Torah. Tavli Torah's picha me alfei zov v'chesef. Thousands of golden coins and silver. And that's, that's the way a person should look at the Torah. I remember many years ago I was in Union City. And I, was, I actually stayed by the house for Shabbos. I'm related. My uh, father's brother's son married the Shefa Chaim's daughter. And I stayed by the Shefa Chaim. And I remember that at that time already he was very weak. And he daven mincha for the Olam. Rebbe sometimes daven mincha. And Shabbos, he daven mincha, he daven shmenes, so he's sitting. He leaned. He daven sitting. The only thing he stood by for the whole Shabbos was Kiddush Friday night. He mustered the strength and the excitement and the holiness and the passion of saying Kiddush Shabbos and being made Edus on Brias HaOlam and thanking Hashem for the Kiddush of Shabbos. It rubs off the cheshit, the excitement that somebody should have for a mitzvah. And we, we, we need... We need to feel this. We need to teach it to our children. We should never view, you know, we, we know what it means to be excited about things. Americans, Americans get excited by a World Series, a Subway Series between the Mets and the Yankees. They get excited about a cowboy steak and a good barbecue with a, with a, with a, with a good wine. They get excited about a certain type of bottle of whiskey. And we know what it means to get excited. And that's the way we have to be excited over the mitzvahs. Not that we have to do it. Right? We're, we're warned. Al tast filoscha keva. Don't make your prayer fixed, a fixed routine. Right? You have to finish. You've got to get out of shul no later than 11. Right? Sukkot the Zimre has to be over no later during the week than 15 minutes. Right? Don't view it kemasui, like a burden. This is a big avayda. Uh, they, they say over that somebody once heard the Chavetz Chaim was always making cheshben and nefesh. So someone once said that he heard the Chavetz Chaim talking to himself. And he said, yeah, you do mitzvahs. But do you have simcha? When you do the mitzvah, he's talking to himself. A person has to have such joy when he does mitzvah. That's how person, the, when the Ksav Seifer says that the Shaifer reminds us, shapru ma'aseichem. A person has to be, comes to shul, and he has to feel excited. I'm going to take those three steps forward and I'm going to meet with the Eibishter. I'm going to be able to talk to the Eibishter. It's a very special time in the day. A person has to work on it. A person has to work. There's things that we have to do. We have to take the tefillin and really kiss it. Like we kiss a child. We have to really feel it. Ah, this tefillin, Hashem Aleim Yichyu, it's giving me chiyas. I'm keeping it next to my head and the heart. It's making me healthier. It's giving me nitzchias. person has to be excited. You know, I remember many years ago when I visited London, I went with my father, Olav Hashem, for a uh, wedding. And uh, at that time, the crown jewels of the Queen of England were open for exhibit. They're not open for exhibit anymore. But they used to be open. And you went into this circular vault and you saw all the amazing jewels of the royal family. I remember there was an orb. The orb is a ball 
that the queen holds, and it was about the size of a volleyball, encrusted completely with diamonds. I remember asking the guard how much such an orb costs. So he asked me, where are you from? So I said, Brooklyn. So he said, we could buy Brooklyn with it. That's what he said. Okay. But that ball of diamonds, you compare that ball of diamonds to a pure tefillin. Tefillin that has the Shemais of Hashem. Tefillin that has the words from heaven, the words of the Torah, the Parshias of Shema and Vahayim Shemaya, to other Parshias. And that they promise Nitzchias, that those tefillin are so much more valuable than a ball of diamonds. So it's a ball of diamonds. I once asked children, how do you convert garbage into a ball of diamonds? Your mother asks you to take out the garbage. That's l'neitzach nitzachim. It's much more than a bag of diamonds. A person has to have, has to have this feeling in him. What, what, what this does for us. Rebel Yelapian cites a Rabbeinu Yaina that's a little chilling. A little, it is a little chilling. The Rabbeinu Yaina writes, that what's the definition of a Russia? Now sometimes a Russia could mean someone who doesn't do the will of Hashem. A tzaddik who's zon v'chilkel acherim, who satisfies and sustains others. So a Russia is the antithesis, somebody that's a miser and, and completely self-centered and selfish. A Rasha is somebody who doesn't fulfill the will of Hashem. A Rasha is also someone who is far from living up to their potential. As the Gemara says, the Gemara says that there's a species of grapes called Rishie Anovim. Stunted grapes, because they never ripen. So Rasha is also someone who doesn't live up to their potential. But Rabbeinu Yainis says another definition of a Rasha. He says, and I quote, Asher Kol Tavoso, all of his desire is Lecheftse Haguf Bechayev, is to fulfill the desires of the body. Vinifredes Tavoso Meavoides Abayre. And his desires are completely separated from the service of of Hashem. In other words, he lives for the cattle eggs in the morning. He lives for the uh, poached salmon in the afternoon, for a cocktail hour, and then a sumptuous steak with uh, uh, delicious potatoes and, and, and sautéed broccoli and uh, uh, candied pears and uh, scented wine, and then later on he has his uh, desserts in the nightcap with a, with a, with a, with a uh, apple cobbler and uh, 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 candy tea, and he, he's, he's, he's busy with uh, all the pleasures of this world, with the media and with uh, Duxiana beds and vacations and yachts, and, 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 and he's totally separate. Now he's, he's, he's davening and he's, he's doing what he has to, and he's even making this man Krishmas, and the, but he, all of his focus is on the pleasures of this world. So Rabbi Yaina says the fate of this person is very sad because since his whole thoughts and hopes and desires and fulfillment is chaymer, is materialism, is hedonism. So he's focused downward. So he says his end will be in the ground. That's his, he'll go back to the earth. 
that he's focused upon. He says, that's a Russia. That's why chesed is so valuable. Because chesed we're not doing for ourselves. So we know we're on the right track. And we're on the right track when we spend extra time praising Hashem and just don't run through the words. And we spend, we spend, we take out time to do Hashem's mitzvahs with a gishmak and not a rush. Okay, you know what, let's, let's do our kviyas item very quickly and let's take bench right away so we can get to the ball game. But when a person is focused with a cheshik on the spiritual, that's what the Rabbi Nishalom wants from us. And Rabbi Yel excuse me, Yechi Ruven, writes that that's the meaning of the Pasuk, Ushmartem es hukoisai ves mushpotai asher yasa isama odom v'chaibeh. Watch my statutes, my laws, that you should do v'chaibehem. So says Rebruven Karanstein, it means live with, through them. That should be your chiyas. You know, my friend writes that he once went to a cemetery and sadly, in one section of the cemetery, there was on the tombstones in the left corner, there was like a circle with a bowling ball with the caption, we live to bowl. There are people that the chai bahem is the golf course. The Chai Bahem is a season of 162 games of baseball. The Chai Bahem is the next uh, show that they could binge on. The Chai Bahem is, they're living from meal to meal. And then after the meal, they live to the bed. That's the Chai Bahem. So it says, Reb Ruvain and Yechi Ruvain, the Shmartem es Kukoitai ves Mishpatai Asher Yasa Isadam Vachaibahem. The Torah should be Achias. That should be the mitzvah, should be Achias. It's not easy to do because we are on a Gashmias world and we have a Gashmias body, right? It means that we have to elevate our, our Neshama and we have to bring the Eight Sahara into the base of Medrash, right? That's the playing field of Ruchnias into the base of Medrash, into the base of Knesses, but that's the avoid of Elul. Anil Adoidi, that's the avoid of Lule Sayraska Shashua. Lule is Elul, that the Torah should be our delight. Rabbi also says that we find that it's more, there, there are 365 negative commandments and 248 positive commandments. So he says it's more serious to be over a love, to do a negative sin, a prohibition, than not to do a mitzvah saseh. And we, we know that by way of punishment, right? You do a love, you get malchus. For being mevatel and asay, there's no malchus. Now why is a loisa say doing a negative prohibition like eating chazer? Why is that more serious than missing out on a positive commandment, than missing out on shaking a little of an anesic? So the simple understanding is, is because when you do a love, you're doing an action against Hashem. Right? You're wearing shotness. You're doing an activity, the pile against Hashem. If you don't shake the little of an anesic, you're just not doing anything. It's passive. So, of course, an active rebellion is worse. We might add that there's another reason. And that is that when you do a, a loisase, any loisase is also a being mavatul nase. Because let's say if you're talking Lashon Hara, at that time you could have been learning. At that time you could have been doing chesed. You could have visited the sick. Right? At that time you could have comforted the mourner. At that time, you could have been saying tiller. So every loisa say is also a bitl of an assay. So every lav is both. But Rabbi Ruben said there's something else. He says, why is it? He asks an interesting question. He says, why is it that if somebody would knock on your door, this is the way he puts it, 
Somebody would knock on your door and hold, you'd be holding a bag. And you're asking what's in that bag. And he says, there's a million dollars cash in this bag and it's yours for the take. So your eyes get excited. And you say, really? So you just have to do one thing. He says, sure, a million dollars, what? He says, you see that sixth floor window? Jump out. And when you land, I'll give you the money. So you'll kick him out of the house. You'll say, okay, thank you. Go, go jump in the lake. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not jumping out of the city. What is it going to help if I'm a pl- pancake and I, and I end up in the morgue, God forbid? What is it going to help that you give me a million dollars? You won't even consider it. So he says, here the eight Sahara comes and he tempts us to sin. He said, we know if we sin, we're going to lose Ayla Mabba. We're going to go to Ghana. You know, the fire of Gehenna is 60 times hotter than the fire in the Matzah Baker. So, so why are we tempted? So, of course, the simple reason is because we don't know Gehenna, right? Seeing is believing. We've never seen it. We don't know what we're facing. But he says a different reason. He says it's because we have a fashtupta hearts. We have tumtum alayf. It's interesting. This is a Another posik in this week's Pasha. It says, Yakecha Hashem Bishigain Ubi Ivarain Ubi Simain Levov. Hashem will smite you to be Meshuga with blindness. Simain Levov. Now, literally, Simain Levov means the confusion of heart. But Rashi translates Simon Levov as Oitem Halev, a Fashtupta Hats. A Fashtupta Hats. What we call Tim Tamalev is the biggest wound for Ruchnius. Because a person who has a Fashtupta Hats, even if he hears his Cyrus, he has no feeling. With some people, they hear words in Shul or Shmuz. And it just slips right off them. They have a fashtup the hearts. They daven, they have no feeling by davening. The mom should have a fashtup the hearts. It's a terrible thing. This is what we say, the last of the vidui's, right? We say, al chet shechatanu lefanecha besimayin levav. Al chet shechatanu, we clap by chatanu, right? The Simma in Leva, with a, a Timtum Alev. That's why one of the things that causes Timtum Alev is Averus. That's the meaning of Avera Gereris Avera. One sin leads to another sin. Because the Avera causes a Feshtup to hearts. That's, what, that's why Ruben says another reason why Eloi Sase is worse than Ase. Because when you do a love, you're causing a fashtup the hearts. You just don't want to say that doesn't cause tim to malay. But somebody that does a sin and speaks lashnari causes tim to malay. That's why it's because of that fashtup the hearts. That's the reason why the Yetzirah is allowed to do his work on us. Otherwise, we would never consider, what, am I crazy? Because of this uh, fleeting pleasure? You, you, mean, you mean I'm going to watch a show on Netflix? And I'm going to watch it, and I, I'm, I missed out. First of all, I looked at women. And second of all, uh, I'm teaching my children the wrong thing. And third of all, because of that, I'm not learning, right? And I'm not helping my wife. I'm, 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 I'm filling my head with the wrong things. And, and I'm going to lose out from sha'orim in, in la'asid lava. A person with sugar and cup, but it has a tim to my life. A person doesn't think, because he has a fish to the heart. It's interesting. That this was the Lubavitcher Rebbe Shita, the Chazadik Lubrav Chuzus Yom Melenu, was the Lubavitcher Rebbe Shita that when a Balchuva comes and he wants to start doing things right, one of the first things you should have him do is to eat kosher. Because if you don't eat kosher, that causes a tim to my life, and with a tim to my life, it's very hard for a person to be misayrim, to person to have a reawakening. With, with the fashtup the hearts because of the lack of kashas. Uh, Tim to my life is a very, very, very hard thing. And that's why we have to be careful, right? 
because when if we want to be able to do what we're talking about in the shir, that the Rabbi Nishlam should view us as bonnet, as his children. Right? We said that when we show an ava, a cheshik, a rotzen, a simcha, then the Rabbi Nishlam says, oh, you're doing ritzayna yishal makayim, like the Gemara Bab Abbas says, Rabbi Zola says, so then you're banim, banim all bets are off. Banim, the son has no wishes to be masked and this is not in the prosecutor, you're in the courtroom. I, with my own family, it works outside of the courtroom. There's different rules for my own family. The Rosh Chachma writes that kol mitzvah deloi asa betchilu urechimu. Any mitzvah that's not done betchilu with fear, urechimu, and love, so it says, It doesn't go up. That's the Lashon of the Zayar HaKadosh. It's a whole different mitzvah. And that's why we don't understand why is it you say that the Yetzirah could tempt us because this Timtum Alev, but what about all the mitzvahs that we do? The mitzvah should widen our hearts. It should cause Achavas Alev, that we should, we should want to do the Ratzon of the Yetzirah type. The answer is, is unfortunately, the Averis, we do it a Cheshit. People watch something, they watch it with a cheshik, they sit in shmuz lashnara, they do it with a cheshik, they're talking during shul, they're doing it with a cheshik. Halavai, the people that talk in shul should daven with the same interest that about what they're talking in the back. Halavai, that they should have the same interest in their davening as when they're talking and doing the terrible sin of talking in shul. But unfortunately, the way it works is, is that the Averis we do it a cheshik because the Yetzar is fueling us to do it with a cheshik and the mitzvahs we do it robotic like commits us on Limuda. We have to reverse that. That's what we daven. It's what Reb Ruvain says that we should do the mitzvahs. It should be like the first time we're putting on tefillin. Again, we have to have a feeling. I told you, 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 want, you want to start working on, on thinking about the mezuzah and utilizing its message that Hashem is in the room and not only is He protecting us, but it's a reminder that He's watching us how we behave and we should fulfill Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Summit. It's interesting that I've said that uh, Shmuel Bar Shilas, the name Shilas is unusual. So I had thought that Shilas is a Rosh Tevis of Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Summit. And my uh, youngest brother, Yitzchak, sent me a uh, WhatsApp. Actually, Rav Yonis Shishtayf, Zechitzat Levrachas, Zechus Yagen Aleinu, my grandmother, Mrs. Chani Yorowitz, Zechran Levrachas, Zechus Yagen Aleinu, grew up in Rav Yonis Shishtayf's home. Rav Yonis Shishtayf was the Masada Kedushin of my parents. And... Uh, Rabbi Yannison Steif writes that Shilas is a Lushan of Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Summit. So, so you want to work on, on, on getting that message with the mezuzah once a day. Put your hand on the mezuzah for 10 seconds. Just once a day. One time, maybe on the bedroom mezuzah before you go to sleep. Once a day, put and think about the message. 10 seconds. Doesn't sound like a lot, 10 seconds. A long time. Hold the mezuzah up for 10 seconds and think that Hashem is watching me. It's going to help you train to look at mezuzah a different way. You, you, you take your tzitzis by the end of Baruch Shammah and you kiss it. You're kissing that you're wearing the uniform of Hashem. You're from the tzva Hashem. You hold your tefillin and you wrap it lovingly and you kiss it. Ah, oh, Hashem gave me something that causes me ariches yamim. Hashem loves me. Hashem aleim yichyu. These are things that we should do. That we should start feeling seiraska shashuai. You take it. Take a slichas. This Matzah Shabbos, you open it up and you think to yourself, wow, I'm talking to the Eibishter. I'm talking to the Eibishter 
He wants me to return. No matter how bad he's waiting for me. He has his hand stretched out to me. You open up a chumash. You say, wow. I'm reading something that wasn't written by a human. I'm reading something that didn't come from this planet. I'm listening to the actual words of Hashem. To do things with a cheshit, with a feeling. We do that, then the Rabbi Nishalaylam doesn't view us as avodim. The Rabbi Nishalaylam views us as vanim. I've told you this many times, that in this way we transcend the malachim. We transcend the malachim. Because when Yaakov was holding on to the malach, the malach said, Shalcheni ka'or And Rashi says, V'tzarech ani shira. I have to go to say shira. It's a very unusual Rashi. What do I mean, I have to? Why doesn't the malach say, I want to? When a child says, I have to bench, we correct them and we say, you, you mean you want to bench? You don't have to say, you know, if your child says, okay, I have to say thank you. You don't want to hear that. I want to say thank you. And if, you if your wife hears you say, okay, I have to buy my wife an anniversary gift. That's a big mistake. You have to? That's why you're doing it? Because you have to? You mean you want to? You mean you're excited to? You mean I deserve it? The answer is, is a malach taka has to do it. Malach doesn't have bechira. We have bechira. And now at this time of the year, that's our challenge. Right? Our challenge is anila dodi. I want to. Say rosche shashua. The Torah is a delight. Then the Rabbani Shalom views us as vanim. Once we're as vanim, then everything is different. Before we continue... Again, I want to mention that if you want to join my Dafa Yavi, so first of all, if you live in Lakewood, come live. We have Mincha at 725. Then I say a small Dvar uh, between Mincha and Marev. Then we have Marev. And then at 810, we have a Daf. So you could come. I'm in Fairways. So you have to go through the front gate on uh, Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, so you tell them you're going to Two Valley Stream. Two Valley Stream is my address of the shul of the Gudis Yisrael Bey Zev of Fairways. Tell me you're going to Two Valley Stream. Give your name and uh, they're going to probably call. Uh, so you could call my cell phone, 718-916-3100 and they'll let you in. Best would be to call me beforehand because if you call while I'm saying this year, it's hard. So call beforehand. We'd love to have you. We already have a live oilam by the shir. If you want to join our Zoom, rate Gemara, these Gemara in circuit, as we start the new parak tonight, we'd love to have you as we start at Cholul. It's 810. You go to zoom.com and put in 718-916-3100. Uh, if you would like to sponsor next week's shir, the last shir of Tav Shim Pei Aleph, you know we could correct in the last week of the year, all the weeks of the year. If you want to sponsor a share, I need to know early in the week, 718-916-3100. That's 718-916-3100. Uh, now, it says in the parasha, Uvaruch ato secha. And you should be blessed when you leave. Rashi, excuse me, the Gemara above Metzia, on Daf Kuf Yudzayin, writes, that our children should be like us. Now, how does that come from Uboruch Ata Secha? The answer is Bitsei Secha means when a person leaves this world after 120. When is a person blessed when they leave this world? When they have children like themselves. Because if they have children like themselves, then even when they leave the world, they're still getting packages. Because Brokharadavu, a child, is an extension of their father. 
in the tzava of the yisayt v'shayrash ha'avayda, in the ethical will of the venerable yisayt v'shayrash ha'avayda, zech tzadik racha, schuz yagen aleinu, he writes that every time we do a mitzvah, we should also have in mind that we're sending packages to a parent in the next world. Zayr HaKadosh writes that there's a bigger mitzvah of Kibbut HaVeim when our parents are not here anymore. Because then they need us in the next world. They can't do anymore. But we could still send them packages. Right? So the Yisai V'Shara Shavayda says anytime you do a mitzvah, let's say you're visiting a sick person. You should have in mind I'm fulfilling the mitzvah of Bikr Chaylim. You could also have in mind you're fulfilling the mitzvah of Allah the Bedrach, of walking in Hashem's ways, just like Hashem visited Avram. But also have in mind that you're fulfilling Kibbut Avay because you're sending packages to a parent in the next world. So whatever the Sayyid Vishar Shavayda wrote, that whenever he did a mitzvah, you also had in mind the mitzvah of Kibbut Avay. Now, by the way, you could do this when your parents are alive as well. My mother's is Ozan Gizunt. She should be for many, 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 many years with us with Gizunt and full use of her senses. So, you know, she says, oh, I have a busy son. But the Kitsa Shulchan Aruch says that when you live properly, you're being Mekayim Kibra because people that see it say, Ashrei Yuladetai. They must have had some parents. So you're bringing honor to your parents. Ashrei Yuladetai. So when your parent is alive, also you certainly could have a mind to Mitzvah Kibbut Avei. But here the Torah adds, Baruch Atah B'Tzei Secha, that also when a person leaves of the world, they should be blessed when they leave if they have tzatzai me'echa k'mayischa. If they have raised good children, then their exit from the world is blessed because they will still be getting packages. It says that when Yaakov saw Yosef, that he was still holy in Egypt, he said, oh, Musa apan, I could die this time. What does that mean? Otherwise he would die more than once. It says that if Yosef would have been sinful and he would have fell into the promiscuity and the uh, uh, idolatry of Mitzrayim, then his Averis would have been sent to Yaakov in the next world. He would have died many times. He says, oh, Musa, now I'm only going to die once. Now I see that you're still following the Ruch Yisrael Sabbath. Now, speaking about Kibbut Avayim, we know that it we have the curses and the blessings, and our grizim and our evil. And one of the curses is Oram Oror Makla of Now, this doesn't just mean cursed is a person who curses his father and mother. Okay, we all understand that that's a very heinous thing. But Rashi tells us that there's a curse even if somebody is mizalzel. Loshin v'nikle achicha treats and views a parent with a bizoyen, views a parent as a low person. Now, this is an asayin for post-Holocaust people. A lot of the people that went through the Holocaust didn't have the education that we have today. And children might even be embarrassed of their parents that their parents aren't spiritual, that their parents aren't sophisticated. There's an Arur Makla of Ima. The Ramam says we have to view our parents like a Sarur Gadol. We have to have an imagery that they're very special people. It's a very, it's, it's not, there's a reason why the Pirkut Rebliezer says that Kibbut Avayim could be the most difficult mitzvah in the time. Because this is an avayda. The Rabbi Nishalom says, without your parent, you wouldn't be here. Without your parent, you wouldn't have a chance at Oilam Abba. 
Without a, a parent, you wouldn't have a marriage. You wouldn't have children. You wouldn't have the ability of Ruchnius or Gashmius. So for you, a parent has to be very special. This is your Shalmi. This your Shalmi is very interesting. Your Shalmi says that we know that for the seven relatives, we have to tear Kriya, Loyalena. But for a parent, we have to tear all the clothing until the heart is uncovered. And Yeshami says a very interesting reason why. Yeshami says because a parent is a double loss. When a parent passes away, not only is it the loss of a close relative, not only is it a tear in the fabric of your being, but also now you can't be Mekayim in the literal sense Kibbalav anymore. You're losing out that fifth commandment, that tremendous opportunity. And here, when a person is thinking of Shoifer, Shapru, Masechen, on what to do, you know, they said, Rabbi Shloyme Freifeld said, that unfortunately, today, everybody has pictures of their children on the wall, of their married couple on the wall. They don't have pictures of their parents. So there used to be people had pictures of their parents on the wall. They were machshiv their parents. The time we spend with a parent it's not always easy, but it's a tremendous mitzvah. Now remember what the Rabbi Shalom says, there's three partners in man, father, mother, and the Rabbi Nishlam, right? That's why a man is called Odom. Dam, which is the gematria of 44, is the gematria of Ov and Aim. Ov is three and Aim is 41, that's 44. And Aleph is the Rabbi Nishlam, the one and only Aleph and Aleph is a, a diagonal vav in two yuds, that's 26, that's yud ke vav ke, Aleph is the chief. So Adam is the three partners. Hashem, father and mother. Hashem says, I'm the silent partner. The way you take care of your parents, that's the way I know you'll take care of me. That's why the mitzvah of Kibbut Avayim is on the first luchas, which is Ben Adam Lamaka, because it's a barometer of how we would treat the Rabbi Nishra. So therefore, it's very important as we, a uh, person shouldn't wait, we're always busy. The, this world is oretz. We're running. Rav Sham Shem Fal Hirsch says that we're always running from cradle to grave. Although I, somebody told me that really he only has one name and not two names. But either way, uh, the, we're always running from cradle to grave. We should make the time for this mitzvah. And in Yitz Hashem, we should be Zaycha as we go back to the central theme of today's shir, that if we want, the Rabbi Nishon should treat us like his egg in a kinder. Right? He should treat us like family. And of course, family, the overriding uh, emotion, Kaviyochel, is love and, and forgiveness and patience, and help, then we have to do our mitzvahs with a feeling. As we ask the Rabbi Nishal, in the Volat Tzion, direct our hearts to you. Help us. That merit, Hashem should grant all of us a Siva Bechasima Taiva Masuka. We hope that you'll join us on the Dafyaimi Zoom.com 718 916 The sponsor is Shear 718 916 3100 at AOL.com. To join me in Lakewood, the Shul, a good as you saw, Bezev of Fairways Lakewood is at Two Valley Stream in the Fairways Complex. Thank you for joining us. And have a wonderful Shabbos.